Excited uh, uh, also for our next uh, segment of today's opening general session, and, and welcome to HDEC, everybody. By the way, it's great to have you here. Uh, we are about to have uh, the very first of anywhere that we know of uh, pitch for pilots, where uh, it's, it's not uh, just a pitch for uh, an award recognition, but it's actually a pitch uh, to pilot technologies in real care environments whether that's in uh, home settings or long-term care and aging service settings. And so you are all going to have uh, both the opportunity to um, vote for your favorite pitch, but also to indicate your interest in being a pilot partner. And we're actually gonna line up those pilots and be involved uh, with you in seeing out those pilot projects. Uh, so lots more uh, detail to come. I'm gonna uh, let my colleagues, Katie Feig and Steven Johnson do that. It's my privilege and HTEC is really happy to partner with Aging 2.0. Uh, Katie and Steven are co-founders of Aging 2.0 and uh, just a real uh, up and coming uh, whole kind of ecosystem of innovators and entrepreneurs in aging and aging and technology in particular and are doing great things. And uh, this is really the first manifestation, this picture of pilots is the first manifestation of a uh, new launch that they are giving, and I'll let them talk about that. Uh, but we have 10 startup technology companies uh, here with us tonight to give those pitches, and without anything further, I'm gonna kick it to Katie and Steven. Hi, um, thank you so much to Aging 2.0 and HTEC West for having us. This is such a cool event. Um, I'm Abby, this is Adam, we're the co-founders of everplans.com. I'm just gonna tell you a quick story about how we got started. I was getting married about three and a half years ago and pretty soon after was having a baby and was using all of the amazing resources like the knot and the bump and the nest and wedding channel and baby channel and I don't even know all of them. I was using them every day, all the time, for at least an hour a day, and it dawned on me, wow, there's all of these amazing resources for people who are dealing with very happy life transitions. What's next? What is there for people who are dealing with the other life transitions, like aging and death and dying? And I mentioned the idea to Adam, and he said, well, there's gotta be something, and we looked around, and we were astonished and appalled and excited because there was nothing, and we thought we could really make a difference here. So we built Everplans. Um, Everplans today is um, a resource for people who need help with all of the complicated decisions around end-of-life topics. We built a library of content. We started with a library of content with over 500 original articles from everything, how to write a will, to how to write a living will, to what to wear to a Muslim funeral, and everything in between. Um, about a year into building this site for all these hypothetical people who might die someday, my own family experienced a personal tragedy. My brother was killed in a car accident last summer. And all of a sudden, all of these issues became incredibly real and turned Everplans into a personal mission. Um, we realized that content isn't enough. What we really needed to build was a service for people to get a plan in place. Um, and that's what we're building today. In two weeks, we're launching a new service where people are going to be able to log in, create an account, and create an end-of-life plan. And Adam's going to take you through it. And so, whether you're a new parent who needs to put together a just-in-case plan, or you're moving into an assisted living facility, and you need to share a for when the time comes plan with your children, Everplans can help you get it all in place so that your family has everything that they need if and when something happens to you. And that covers a variety of items from things like 
like wills and powers of attorney to living wills and healthcare proxies and even post forms to online accounts and passwords uh, to funeral plans. And, and the way Everplans does that is like this. First, you sign up for an account and we take you through a, a short and simple assessment where we learn a little bit about what's going on in your life and what planning you might have already done. And then based on that information, we put together a personalized plan of attack that, that brings forward um, the most important holes that you need to fill in your plan first and walks you step by step through how to get that done. So for instance, if you hadn't done a living will yet, Everplans can steer you towards a bunch of content that will teach you everything you need to know about living wills, but it will also uh, direct you to download uh, an interactive PDF of your state's um, official living will form so you can just get it done and, 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 and get it in place right away. And then the third part of our service is a secure and HIPAA compliant vault where you can store all of the output of all of your planning in one place and you can set permissions so that uh, you know, maybe your wife or your children have access to your entire plan, but members of your health team or, or, or somebody at your assisted living facility might only have access to your advanced directive. And, and it's nice because it's a patient-centric ownership model for all this information. So even as one patient um, progresses potentially through a series of different elder care living situations, their, their information always follows them along. And we think that the tool we built would be very helpful to your communities. We're interested in piloting with you. We're already in the middle of doing a number of pilots, one really exciting one with Johns Hopkins. And if you're interested, please come talk to us. We're looking for organizations who are looking to improve how they engage with patients around advanced care planning and with organizations who are interested in improving the number of their patients who have advanced directives. So please come talk to us and thank you again. And vote for us. Hello, uh, my name is Anupam Hata, and I'm the CEO of Lift Labs. And we're developing some new technologies that are designed to help people with neurological disorders that are age-related that result in body tremors. And uh, we all have tremor to some extent. I think uh, you all probably noticed the last time you were trying to thread a needle and notice that level of frustration. So Katie mentioned something about uh, design for empathy, and I'd like, really like to encourage you tonight when you're eating to try and empathize and imagine that level of frustration when you're doing just a simple task, like bringing food up to your mouth with the, with the utensil. And uh, that level of frustration of not being able to do that without spilling is a reality for millions of people in the U.S. alone. Uh, this is due to a central tremor and other forms of disorders like Parkinson's disease. What we've developed is a new technology that is designed to actively cancel out the tremor. Right now, there's drugs or you know, brain surgery that's really out there, but for many, many people, that's not really an option. The drugs have side effects and brain surgery is just too invasive. So what we've done is a simple device that will actually detect a person's tremor and it'll work to cancel the effect of the tremor out so that the person can be able to function. <laughs> Sorry, let me explain this. This is uh, somebody's first reaction when they uh, started. We went into a, a support group um, and, and encouraged her to try to use our device. It's okay, we're gonna get Yeah, and let's see you use the left door one more time. Oh, it just turns on all by itself, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Yeah. That's pretty cool. And you know, we'll try to get it. All right, here we go. Okay. <laughs> that just makes all the difference in the world, I'm telling you. Yeah. It really does. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see if I can do this without pulling my head forward because I like to be able to eat like a normal person mm -hmm. for a change. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So um, that was a couple months ago we found that. We've actually given her a device. She's been using it and really loves it. Um, we've tested the device through NIH 
funded uh, clinical study at the University of Michigan and showed clinical efficacy. What I'd really like to do with a proposed pilot is to have this in a, a facility and to be able to demonstrate, one, to be able to compare it with current devices that have been used, like this weighted utensils and weighted wrist cuffs. So we'd like to look at the um, improvement in the self, uh, self-efficacy in ADL. Um, we'd also like to use what we did in our clinical studies, a global, uh, global, clinical global impression scale. And then the third aim is really to show an improvement in caregiver satisfaction. So we'd like to do this, one, in a short term, and also a long term, probably a couple of months of the person using it every day. Um, we're very interested in the results, and we'd really like to, again, um, find the right, the right organization that would really believe in what we're doing and, uh, and look for these types of results as well with the patients. Thanks. Hi, I'm Amy Fallo. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Lively. Here's the uh, Lively Hub. We've been shipping for uh, about seven weeks now. Oh. We're on a mission to keep older adults living independently longer. It was great to hear Eric Dishman <coughs> talking about this. We think this is something not just about bending the cost curve, but better outcomes. So by you guys, um, well, you guys know about the demand for home health care. Um, we're really trying to think about a way for assisted living, independent living, CRCRCs, to actually make this profitable. We know that uh, customer acquisition cost is one of the great things you guys have on your uh, expense line. We actually think there's a way to uh, reduce that. Maybe give away a, a lively system with a year subscription, really understand what's going on with that person if they've taken a tour, and then you give it to them, you understand exactly what's, what data is going on with their ADLs, etc., and you have a really great insight as to what's going on in that person's life. We really think there's an incredible improvement in customer retention by engaging the entire family, and I'll show you in the video. And finally, the last thing, and this is, I'm paraphrasing from things I've read, really differentiate, differentiate yourselves with Lively. Get to that crossover point at 90% utilization and really great profitability. So this is Lively, now you the video. Switch over. Meet Mary. She's 88 years young and fiercely independent, and she lives at home on her own and intends to do so for as long as possible. After all, isn't this what we all want? Meet Julie, Mary's daughter. She's always admired her mother's independence, but she worries, maybe a bit too much, about how her mother is doing. Well, any of us concerned about an aging loved one knows how this story can play out. Mary doesn't want to be a bother to her children who worry, and Julie finds herself nagging her mother about the daily events of her life. Well, we at Lively believe that getting older shouldn't mean losing control of your life. So we created Lively. Lively is two things, activity sensors for living independently and Livelygram, a fantastic new way for Mary to get pictures and messages through the postal mail. Here's how Lively works. Lively sensors are placed on objects in Mary's home, like her refrigerator, pillbox, and keychain. Lively then learns Mary's normal routine patterns through the movement of these objects. The refrigerator door opening and closing, a pillbox being used, or when Mary takes her keys out of the house. The sensors communicate wirelessly to a central hub, which then sends activity information to a secure website, all with no internet connection required in Mary's home. Mary also chooses who in the family has secure access to her routine activity. This display is super simple, where green faces mean everything is A-OK. -okay. Yellow and red faces indicate that something may be amiss, and you can tap on any face to see more detail. And Lively can send reminders and notifications to both Mary and those who care about her. Lively's passive sensing isn't too intrusive. It's not Big Brother monitoring, and there's no video cameras or anything to wear. Now, let's talk about Livelygram, the creative way for friends and family to share the events of their lives with Mary. Here's what Mary gets with Livelygram. Let's say Mary doesn't regularly use Facebook or other social networks to stay in touch. She then misses out on family fun updates and photos. With Livelygram, Mary's family and friends simply send pictures and messages to Lively. Lively automatically converts the content into a printed, personalized mailer. 
So you see, with Lively, Mary gets what she wants more than anything, to live in her own home as long as possible, with an even stronger connection to those she loves. And Julie knows Mum is safe and secure, and can now just talk to Mum to catch up, rather than to check in. Be connected. Be well. Be Lively. Also, we're coming out um, with the next generation parts. Um, Uh, we're working with a separate group. Uh, there are a couple problems with PERS today you guys are familiar with. 40% uh, of the time there's non-compliance, and 30% of the time uh, they are unable to activate the button. I don't have the time here to go into it, but we can solve both of these problems. Finally, there's a, it's got skipped. The pilot ask, sorry. I'll skip that. Um, you guys, what are our goals? We want to collect uh, and validate measurable ROI, improve care coordination and customer satisfaction on both sides of the equation, both the loved ones and the elders. And we do want to see a path to a significant institution, institutional deployment. Thank you very much. We are uh, focused on uh, one common uh, denominator here for this audience, which is uh, trying to extend care beyond your community campus. Uh, into the uh, homes of 40 million seniors. Uh, we know the ratios and we believe that in combination of technology and a combination of services that you bring to the party, we believe that we can help provide efficient care to the home. So the uh, Live Well Health platform is really an integrated and customizable solution for community-based care. Um, there's four parts to the system. First one is we develop our own custom user interface, which would make it really easy for seniors or family caregivers to book services uh, that would be offered through your communities. Second one is a services reservation system. So think of this as open table for caregiving. So in other words, if you have transportation, home care, handyman services, either directly in your communities, or you have uh, fostered relationships with third party, they can be uploaded into our system and you have a workflow management system that uh, manages the notifications and calendars. Uh, the third area is, uh, which we believe is uh, important is the ability to have video conferencing in order to check in with loved ones or for loved ones uh, to uh, check in with their family uh, caregivers, our seniors. Uh, we feel like uh, this is a, an enabling tool not just for uh, across families but also for the provider themselves to the senior as well as uh, some exploratory discussion we've had with several uh, hospital providers that want to use it for a team-based care coordination system. Uh, there's four parts to the system. Uh, first one is a, uh, a portal for the senior. Uh, we actually experimented with different designs and uh, settled on a, a web-based solution that can be used for a PC or an iPad tablet. Uh, the second one would be uh, for the family caregiver or the service provider that might be a mobile uh, service worker. Third one would be your people. So we feel like it's instrumental to maintain that relationship with your communities. And so some of your care coordinators or facility operators actually leverage our system to, to maintain that touch point. And then last but certainly not least, we built this all as a native application on top of salesforce.com because we feel like it's the best solution to uh, not only manage the workflow, but also dramatically reduce the cost and scale and, uh, while also offering the security and manageability requirements that an enterprise would require. Uh, one example drill down is, I'll, I'll say it's a services uh, reservation system. Uh, you can tell that we basically leverage a, a modular solution. So many of the communities that we've spoken with don't really know how to get started or they don't exactly know where they want to be the next two or three years. So instead, we took a step back and said, what if we could just give you a framework whereby we use the technology as you deploy your services and get more comfortable you can add additional services as you grow your business. And we let, let you guys customize this to, to your needs and then broker all of those relationships just like OpenTable prepared it. So the overall goal for us is uh, really enhancing independence. Uh, and uh, most importantly for, for you as facility operators, you have all these assets, let's try to improve the resource utilization as well as the staff efficiency. The more efficient we can make you, 
uh, using this system, the more lives you can touch. Uh, what are we looking for? We've already uh, released the product uh, this summer. We've had two pilots that's already uh, deployed. Um, we just came back from Leading Edge. We had very uh, successful visits there as well. Uh, what we're really looking for is uh, some user level engagement, both from the staff as well as the senior uh, members of your communities. Uh, on our side, we are also looking at possible ecosystem partners. Many of you are contemplating new business models that might be uh, pursuing uh, ACOs or, or uh, other, other types of constructs in this new uh, age of caregiving. We feel like we have a common toolkit that can be repurposed to serve multiple needs. Um, and what we're looking for are folks that have strong <laughs> executive leadership that are committed in trying to go transform and innovate. Uh, the second one is you, you need to have some sort of in-home type of offering today. Um, the reason we say this is that uh, it's ex a part of this is it's not about the technology. It's really about putting all the ecosystem and infrastructure in place within your communities to be able to leverage technology wisely, right? So the example would be you have transportation vans or you may have a uh, handyman or home care or nutrition, <coughs> nutritionist going to the home. Those are the type of services that we think we can drive more efficiency. And then last, uh, but certainly not least, uh, we, we feel like uh, not only are we deploying from a piloting, uh, we feel like uh, if you guys are truly committed in helping transform this model, then you better have the budget to go do it. I, I mean, I, I've been in several uh, pilot programs before, and uh, one thing that uh, I really admire are companies that are not only have the leadership, but they're they're trying to go learn and then have the uh, willingness to say, go beyond pilot. This is not a kick the tire type of approach, right? So um, if, you, if that's something that you're interested in as well, we're committed to invest, um, we'd love to have you. All right, thank you. Uh, my name is Dave Nelson. I'm one of the co-founders of QMedic. Uh, we make a medical alert, panic button, uh, also PERS called, uh, that's proactively identifying functional decline in the home using sensing. Uh, our company was founded out of MIT and we've been funded by the National Institute of Health to develop this product. So about, there are about two million people in the US we think that are using panic buttons and many of them are in your communities or your patients. And the big problem that we identified in this market is that they really only help you after an emergency. They don't do anything for you those two years from when you get the service to when you have the emergency. They don't really help you. And so our question is, how can we make a smarter medical alert service, a smarter panic button that's not just reactive, but it's proactive? How can we open that black box and show caregivers what's happening to their loved ones in the home that's leading up to these emergencies and hopefully prevent them? So what we've done is we've created a, a proactive panic button. We have a wearable button that's like the others, but the difference is we have a sensor built into it that can detect activity, physical activity levels, sleep quality, user compliance, and location. And let's take an example user and see how we, she would benefit from this. Let's take Mary. She's a user of this system. First of all, it's a safer solution for her. We can detect all the time whether she's wearing the button and we can send an alert to her caregiver if she's not wearing the button. We can detect if she wakes up later than normal um, on a given day and send an alert to her caregiver to check in on her. We can detect if she leaves her home and doesn't come back in a normal amount of time. So these are examples how we can make a safer solution for Mary. So we're really excited about an opportunity to partner with you and a pilot. Uh, we're looking for 20 seniors and, and caregivers to test out the solution with the purpose really being to identify actionable and and uh, meaningful updates that we can provide to caregivers that help them keep their seniors in their home and, and keep them well. Uh, we'd love to get a, a long-term partnership even beyond this pilot. Uh, we have a lot of opportunities that come through, through our partnership with the NIH and other partnerships we have with leading physical activity and rehab researchers. So if there's a long-term opportunity, we'd, we'd love to discuss that as well. So look forward to talking to you. Thanks. We just learned a little bit about how um, our our family caregivers have a lot of stress in their lives and they've got a lot to do. But we also need to remember one thing that's very important. Great. 
The family caregivers control 72% of all senior spend. So if we think about that for just a minute and realize that within your own industry, the dollars that are spent, 72% of them are controlled by this 45 to 54 year old oldest daughter of our aging seniors. And this is an important um, player in this whole marketplace. So the question is today, are you marketing towards them? Are you spending time learning about them and helping them so that you can influence their decisions in where they spend their money? So Caring in Place does exactly that. We help family members do their job, help them become family caregivers for their aging loved ones. We do this through an iPhone app, an Android app, and also a web portal. We use uh, the Checklist Manifesto, which is a book you may have read from Atul Gawande, and that whole process of using a checklist to help them know when to do, what they need to do, and how to care for an aging senior based on the conditions of that aging senior. And the way that we do this is through these different functionalities. Uh, intelligent checklists, those are the to-do lists that we have. Medication adherence, care coordination, much like Eric talked about with the teams. By using these tools, we help you uh, attract the family caregivers and also influence where they're going to spend their money. So today, the question is, how are you using the, how are you connecting with these family caregivers? By being able to use our solutions and branding them as your own, you're also able to connect with these family caregivers and ultimately, it's a touch point to where you become family caregiver friendly. So we're looking for organizations that are part of HTEC West that are interested in partnering and partnering and sharpening their focus on the family caregivers so that you can draw them into and help control where they're going to spend their money. Uh, we have the ability to help you brand these products and then provide them to your, the caregivers of your existing clients or to your prospective clients. So you're hearing multiple pitches today for pilots. Why would you want to choose to do a pilot with Caring in Place? First, we've been invested in by Blue Cross and Blue Shield. We're stable. We're not going anywhere. We're not a fly-by-night company. We'll be here for some time. Second, we've already done multiple pilots. And because of that, we have all the marketing material necessary and the support documentation. And we also can limit the amount of effort on your end in order to do a pilot with us because we've been through that process already. Third, a mobile platform. This is critical. Our family caregivers, they rely on mobility and using a solution that's with them. They don't carry a laptop to mom's home in order to help provide the care for mom. They want and expect it to be done on their phones, their smartphones. Our content is not harvested from the internet. We have a licensing agreement with the same company that provides all of the content for WebMD and also for Epic as an EMR, EHR. Our clinical advisory board is headed up by an individual here in the Bay Area from UCSF. Uh, he's the chair of our doctor's board. We're a West Coast company and this is what we do full time, which means that we're available to help you and help you engage more fully with these family caregivers so that you can take your portion of that 72% and determine where those funds will be spent. So we're interested in talking with you today and hope to have a chance to run a pilot with you. Thank you very much. How many of you know how your parents met? Show it. All right, most of you, that, that was helpful. Uh, how about how you, what your mom's friends were like when she was in high school? Uh, fewer. Uh, how many of you know what the best advice your dad got from his parents was? All right, one, good, two. All right, so my name is Nick, and I'm the founder of StoryWorth, and we make it really easy for people to record their family stories. This is my dad. He is 83 years old. Uh, he was born in 1930, before transatlantic flights, before television. Um, he's had a really interesting life. He was in the Navy. He's traveled around the world as a lawyer. Uh, he ended up settling in France, where he met a Swedish woman, with my mom. Um, so he has a lot of great stories, as you can imagine. Now, I got married this past May, and with a little luck, we'll have kids in the next few years. So I'm hopeful that my dad will get a chance to meet my kids. But how much about him will they really remember? I want my kids to know my dad the way I know him. 
I want them to read his stories and hear his stories the way he tells them. And that's what StoryWorks is about. Here's how it works. Each week, we email our customers a question about their life. All they have to do is reply to that email. And in fact, if they don't like to type, they can even reply with a phone call, and we'll record the audio. We then save their story on StoryWorth.com and forward it to their family members. It's super, super simple. And that simplicity is really the core of what we do, because we know that writing these stories takes time, and it takes effort. And so the only way it's actually going to happen is if you turn it into this weekly, bite-sized habit. We launched in April, and we have a bunch of paying customers already. But I think the opportunity we have with doing a pilot is to get much more focused feedback from a small group where we can regularly check in on them and get their experience of the product. Recording these stories is not only important for the families, but it's also a really wonderful way to stay connected and stay engaged with family members. And I would love to work with you to bring that gift to your residents. Thank you. Hi everyone, is everyone doing okay? Ninth kitchen, everyone okay? Good, okay. Well, I'm going to tell you about Tapestry. Tapestry is a US and Sydney based company that is uh, based in San Francisco and Australia. And we've been backed by a lot of Australian organizations, good government organizations, We've also gotten national awards, including the top innovation award uh, in the country, and we've gotten some really great positive press lately. So, in the biggest news stations, as well as TechCrunch, and we were even featured on the Today Show as a must-have app. Um, so what is all this fuss about? So Tapestry is the most beautiful and simple way to allow seniors to connect with the people they love and care about, whether that's their family, or maybe the other residents in their community and the management of the facilities in which they live. Our design is universal. It could be used by a five-year-old or a 95-year-old and both together. Um, also, it can be used on your desktop, your iPad, your Android, your iPhone, whatever method you prefer or the senior prefers most. So the features that we have, our most popular feature is of course photo sharing because there is nothing more motivating and more important in life and seeing photos of your family and the people you care about. And we've made it so that as fast as I'm on my phone, uploading to Facebook, taking photos of this and tweeting them or uploading them, that's as fast as my grandmother's getting those photos. So we've really made a bridge between the way that you might upload photos as someone in their 20s and 30s and the way you want to receive them as someone in their 80s or 90s in a pop-up in a really simple way and that senior never has to sign up for Facebook or deal with email or deal with the security issues that go with social networks. They get to receive the photos. We've also got messaging for those people that don't want to use email, daily weather, very, very popular for daily checking. And then, of course, for those in this room that have facilities, a bulletin board so that you can post notifications for meetings, reminders, um, photos of the activities going on downstairs so people can come and join in, and for the senior to receive that in a really easy and wonderful way. So we've done a bunch of pilots with a range of uh, organizations, including CCRCs. Uh, one of our first pilots was at Wesley Mission, which is in Sydney. And what happened here was really successful, but most notably, we took a survey of the residents that went through the trial and we said, if you had something like tapestry here at this community, would that affect your decision positively to move in? And 100% of them said yes. It was incredible and really shows that we're going in the right direction. This slide was not made by us. This slide was actually made by Lendlease, which is the biggest retirement living provider in Australia. They brought this slide to us as their vision for how they see tapestry benefiting not only their residents in their daily lives, but their top and bottom line through, through a lot of different ways that I could go through, but I guess we only have a minute. Um, I actually want to focus on one, sales and marketing reach. So the way tapestry works is the senior connects to their other residents, but also to their family, to their grandchildren, children, and great-grandchildren. So you as a, a senior living provider will send messages through our system that will go not just to the senior, but their families, everyone they're connected to on Tapestry. So your brand reach exponentially will increase. 
with that. Just say you have 80 residents signing up, 60 of their families uh, signed up around them. This is what happened at one of our pilots. That's 400 extra people you are reaching with your messaging. And there's no way you can do that with such a low cost. There's no way you can collect all those email addresses, reach all those people in any other way with such minimal cost. So that's something that Lendly sees as huge for them and we'd like to bring here to you. Um, the structure of our pilot is, is quite similar to what Katie and Stephen were talking about, but I want to focus on the fact that we've done several pilots, and we know that is where we learn the most, and that's why we really want to offer this opportunity to you, because we've done this before, as others have, but me, happy me, will be there for you as your point person, uh, weekly, daily calls, you know, whatever's necessary to make sure that both sides benefit with the goal of a long-term partnership. We want to bring you to a place where you're positioning yourself as an attractive, innovative, amazing place, and you're giving the residents the gift of connecting to those that they love and changing their lives. And that's really that's really what it's all about at the end of the day. This is Claire, my favorite user. She she said to me, Tapestry's changed my entire life because she'd never used technology before, but then she was a part of the pilot and was able to get photos from a wedding across the country that she health-wise couldn't attend and it changed her entire life. She got them in real time just as fast as they could be uploaded, and she realized that, there, that her life wasn't over, she wasn't gonna be left behind because of technology, she was gonna be there all the way through. So that's why we're here, and, and that's why we're really excited to do a pilot, so thanks. All right, good afternoon. I'm Claire, this is James, we're from TrueLink. At TrueLink, our mission is to protect seniors from fraud, scams, and financial abuse. So as everyone in this room surely knows, billions of dollars are stolen from seniors every year through scams, fraud, and misleading marketing. This could be anything from the pushy telemarketer who calls insisting that they give out personal information to the sweepstakes that you just have to give a few dollars to enter to the new neighbor who seems helpful but has ulterior motives. So for seniors, falling prey to things like these causes shame, embarrassment, and loss of independence. For their families, it's just one more source of stress. For continuing care organizations, you have to help families clean up complicated financial situations, and when bad actors in the industry end up in the newspaper, it's a reputational risk for all of us. So that is why we created TrueLink. TrueLink is a debit card. It works just like a regular Visa card when a senior is out shopping with friends or at the movies or buying groceries. But if they give out the number over the phone to an unknown caller, it automatically blocks that charge. So here's how it works. A trusted family member or caregiver sets up an account online they put a customized set of rules in place for that senior. So if there's been an issue with donating to unscrupulous charities, they automatically block charitable donations, except for a whitelist of three trusted and known charities the senior's been donating to for years. Or if there's been an issue with late night orders from the TV that come with hidden shipping and handling charges, you can automatically block purchases from the TV online or over the phone. If you just know that any time there's a purchase of more than $500, something might be amiss and you want to look, look into it, TrueLink can send a text alert right away and you can look into it. So for seniors, the TrueLink card is a way to preserve their independence. For family members, the TrueLink card it can help eliminate, eliminate those financial issues and give them back more time to spend with their loved one as well as one less thing to, care, uh, to worry about. And for you guys, the continuing care facilities, the TrueLink card can be a replacement for complicated cash management systems, which might be in place right now, or other workarounds that you currently have, where staff have to be hyper accountable for any transactions which take place under their watch. So our product is a debit card, and we've built it so that it works as an easy replacement uh, for what the older adults you serve currently have in their wallet. So we'd love you to come by our booth and give us your feedback about the product and, and pick up materials to take back to your communities for anyone who you think this might benefit. But as Claire mentioned, our mission is broader than just the card. We strive to prevent elder financial abuse. 
So what we'd like to pilot with your organizations is educational programming that we've developed to educate seniors, care, family caregivers, and the staffs of continuing, continuing care organizations about fraud, uh, scams, and senior financial abuse, as well as prevention methods. So through our pilot, we're offering an in-person, interactive training for your residents or clients on elder financial abuse and uh, steps they can take to prevent it. For your staff, we're offering training about what to look for, what to report, and what steps they can take. And then outreach materials for your family caregivers to help them support their loved ones and preserve their independence. So we think this pilot would be a great fit for independent and assisted living facilities, uh, as well as home care agencies. So I think we're at the end. Uh, we've got wine at our booth, so we're gonna stop. <laughs> but come by, have a glass of wine, uh, let us know what you think, let, find out more about what we're up to, and please let us know if you're interested in partnering with us. Thank you. So yeah, we're Care Solver. I'm Shana Hoffman, one of the co-founders, joined by my colleague uh, Eric Morin here. Um, and we really believe the path forward is through the education and engagement of the informal family caregiver. So part of the reason why is when we look at kind of the who's providing care to seniors, we see that about actually 83% of senior care is provided by informal family caregivers. Um, so you see kind of some of the stats. Well, maybe you actually don't see some of the stats, which don't appear to be showing up here. Um, but kind of there's a lot of family caregivers, they're doing a lot of hours per week of work, spending a lot of money, and in many cases delivering complex care with limited training. Um, and so very quickly it becomes evidence that this is, is really a challenge to the system because by and large the system really fails all of these participants because it's not really supporting these family caregivers in a meaningful way. Uh, and so you can look here at kind of the negative outcomes what we can see for both the caregivers, for the seniors, and then for the system more broadly. So Medicare Advantage plans, um, our providers, ACOs, any Thing you like that's a risk-bearing entity. Um, and so the reason, the primary reason why uh, we feel that this happens is because family caregivers are not given the information and instructions of what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. Uh, and so they're kind of left to their own devices and in many times they're quite reactive in their approach to kind of providing care to their loved ones. Uh, and that's what kind of causes some of those outcomes that you saw on the slide before. So how, what do we see as the path forward to how do we actually change this? Uh, so CareSolver's vision is really that by educating and engaging the informal family caregiver and really raising their level of proficiency and making them do all the right things at the right place at the right time, they then start to work with the system and we create this kind of nice cycle here where we're providing better care to our seniors, which then creates better senior health. This obviously has impacts on reducing healthcare spending and we've also unburdened the family caregiver. Uh, and so that's kind of the, the cycle that we're trying to create with Care Solver. So how do we actually go do this? Uh, so we give the family caregiver a customized action-oriented care guide. And so what that looks like is we have inputs that we take into our system, whether that be from the family caregiver, whether that be kind of from the formal system through a pull from the HR, through Blue Button, there's some of the new things that are coming out. Uh, and then we create these customized action-oriented care guides, which have really an educational component uh, and then also a component of what do you actually go do to execute on those tasks that we're suggesting. So kind of a uh, learn and then act model. Uh, and then we kind of give them access to resources, whether that be how-to videos or actually resources that can help them execute on these tasks with really the, the end goal that they're kind of doing the right things at the right place at the right time. Uh, so just kind of to give you a quick snapshot of kind of care solver in action. So a very classic case, we have kind of Anne and her mom, Susan. Susan has dementia and di diabetes, probably some other comorbidities. Uh, Anne's quite overwhelmed in caring for Susan. And then this has, you know, negative outcomes in terms of uncontrolled sugar levels, diabetic foot ulcers, and a house that's unsafe for fall risk, all of which are things that we see as preventable. Um, and then we kind of have care solver enter and Anne signs up for care solver or she's prescribed it through a provider uh, and she receives a customized care plan for diabetes and dementia. What that gives her is custom uh, reminders for glucose checks. She can schedule a podiatrist appointment, which is you know highly correlated with the diabetic foot ulcer risk. Um, and she can follow the step-by-step -step instructions for fall proofing Susan's home. She also can get information about joining a local support group. And really what we're hoping to achieve kind of here is that um, box four here where we've kind of achieved on the outcomes that we mentioned in terms of better health, lower costs, and reduced burden. 
Uh, just a final thing. So we feel like we've assembled kind of a, a great team to go actually go execute on this. Um, so we have Eric and myself, which as Katie mentioned, we have kind of backgrounds in the healthcare space and, and in the senior living space. And then we have our, our rock star development lead, who is probably coding at this moment um, and uh, is kind of helping us build out the product. So I will uh, stop there and open it for questions. Does anybody have any questions? We'll start sure. in the back, JB. Sure, so um, kind of in the slide, we mentioned that the, the benefits really roll up to the system level. And so our hypothesis is that if you can tr uh, move the needle on reducing costs in specific kind of conditions, that those benefits flow back to the system, whether it be providers or insurance companies. Uh, so we're working on pilots. We have a pilot with a Medicare Advantage plan where we're looking at kind of in specific disease states. Let's roll out a very focused plan, looking at kind of comorbidity management and see if we can kind of move the needle there. And then also on the provider side, certainly getting into things such as readmission missions um, and, and areas of interest there uh, as it relates to geriatric emergency departments. And, and so the, the revenue model is more on the institutional side. Susan, did you have a question? Yes. So when the information comes into your system, do you use an algorithm-based system to output or and is it sort of learning over time for that particular person? That's exactly right. So um, basically, when it first comes in, it goes through our care engine, and we give them their kind of customized action-oriented care guide. And then from there, it's really there are inputs along the way. So we have kind of a box that sits in the home. We can do wireless medical device monitoring. Those inputs would then drive kind of changes to the care plan. We also have risk assessment. So if we see the caregiver takes a risk assessment and has high caregiver burden levels, we're able to add another module which says caregiver wellness or point them to things like that. We can also do interventions, whether it be a follow-up call, um, text messages to say, hey, this reading was missed, and really trying to interact and kind of update things as you go um, in a way that's kind of scalable for us as a business, but also really engages them over time. I like the integration you guys have of assessments. I think a lot of caregivers, don't you don't know what you don't know sometimes in these roles, so I think they really help guide people through and think you know, in bite-sized chunks, which is helpful when you're overwhelmed. Are there any other questions? Steven. Um, caregivers are going to be really busy and uh, stressed. Uh, how do they know that you have this amazing resource for them? Yeah, so I mean, I think part of it from us is that that's why we see the system as a really helpful way to kind of help push this out, is that we know that uh, caregivers really trust the physicians and the people that are kind of providing these things to them. So our vision is that it's kind of prescribed to them. Um, and so we know that a lot of them, especially in certain uh, care states in terms of dementia, do typically come to those appointments. And so they would kind of be there, be told about it. Um, also, interestingly, we we are not kind of going the direct to consumer route. But, you know, since our, our launch, we have about 600 caregivers that have registered kind of organically. And so our sense is there is, is kind of the, the pull from the market as well. So we see it as this kind of the push from the system and then kind of the pull from the market is is kind of how you can get to those caregivers. Anything else? One of the things I think is really neat is I think in caregiving up until now, um, it's been pretty flat content still. So if you are a caregiver and you want to research something, you kind of can find articles and you can find, you know, top 10 lists and you get handed some brochures on your way out the door. And I think, you know, as we move to more Web 2.0 and, you know, these things that can be more dynamic and can learn about you and can give you what you need to know when you need to know it, I think our space in caregiving is still just catching up to other places where we've been able to be much more dynamic. So it's exciting to see these kind of, you know, algorithms and things brought into um, caregiving where people really need, um, you know, to have it served to them a little bit more. One more. Is this a tool that the paid home health care provider could also use? Or is yeah. it redundant? Um, so, I mean, I think our thought is that, yes, that there's probably an opportunity there. We felt like the really underserved market was kind of on the informal family caregiver. They were the ones who, when we interviewed, were kind of crying out for the tool. But I think certainly there is, um, you know, a business opportunity in that space. I think we're, we're starting kind of on the, the caregiver side just because they control a lot of the, as it relates to readmissions, and when you look at kind of that 83% number. But certainly there are applications in the, in the home care space as well. Thank you.